on the, the politics uh, uh, question. Of, uh, uh, maybe I won't answer the question exactly, so John can bring me back on this one. But the, the first thing that comes to mind is this issue of uh, the moment you say something is a signature, something else isn't. And so all the people who aren't then begin to uh, politically organize uh, in ways that uh, can be counterproductive in, in order to get things done. And uh, I'll, I'll just share an example that doesn't relate to the arts at all. And uh, uh, I, I don't know that this would be a, a model that would work at every kind of institution, but uh, in, a, in a prior institution, the, the Council of Deans really wanted to take on this issue. Uh, of identifying signature programs for the institution. <coughs> so uh, we worked together on that and we agreed that we probably needed to have at least three and that, uh, uh, and that uh, we begin to engage uh, the faculty uh, in some areas that um, we thought represented some promise. Uh, uh, I think you're, you're wise if you want to go down this kind of pathway that you create a process to identify signature programs that you uh, put forward a set of questions and ask people to come together. Our objective in that situation is to create, uh, to uh, foster interdisciplinarity. So we constructed that as a key element of a signature program. It had to call across at least three colleges. So in setting that up then, suddenly faculty were getting together across the colleges to construct proposals. And, uh, and then resources were going to flow and they saw that there were resources in the budget that were set aside to support the programs that were identified as signature programs. So <laughs> by taking that kind of a, a, a ground level um, uh, approach, letting, uh, letting ideas then work their way through the system, uh, it eventually got to the Council of Deans, which then took a year agonizing over who to choose. And uh, ultimately they did end up choosing uh, what were three very good threads that were engaging faculty all across the institution. And, uh, and that was a story of one that worked. Uh, in another life, uh, within a college, when I was a dean, I wanted to identify subspecialties within the, the arts that would be signature programs within the arts. And there, um, uh, a group of administrators sat down and kind of cooked up, who's the best? Okay, we, these are the best, so we'll just use these. These will be the signature programs. We'll go back and tell everybody, it's this, this, and this, because they're the best. And you can imagine what happened there. <laughs> so that was, a, that was a good learning experience in, in terms of you should have a, be sitting in a position where uh, somebody is an arbiter of the quality of the program, and it certainly shouldn't be you. Uh, you're better to identify what does a signature program look like, what are its characteristics, what objectives do we want to achieve in a signature area, and then use an appropriate process that's very consultative with the faculty that ultimately can get you closer to that, even if they say, we, are, uh, we don't want to take the rap, we're not going to choose, but you know, here, choose from these. Uh, at least you've gone at least through a process that, uh, that have a, a agreed, upon, uh, agreed upon rules. So um, that's how I think you might get at a culture that would support a signature, because everybody was invested in the process, so that when a decision's made, then folks recognize that everybody had a fair shot. I also will tell two stories. Uh, one uh, was from the institution when I served on the board of uh, private Catholic college, and um, the trustees uh, felt that it was important to make a collective statement to the faculty that they greatly valued the work that the collective faculty were doing. Uh, the board was not in a position to make uh, judgments between departments or schools or individual faculty, but raised funds on its own and promised substantially more funds in the years to come, uh, if the faculty themselves would identify uh, points of excellence and the fund could be used to augment those points of excellence. Uh, after one year, the faculty took no action at all because there was a, a subculture that said, if we do that, we have just become in collective judgment of one another, and the strong will get stronger. Whoever those people are will resent it, the other 90%. Nothing happened. The board let the money sit there for two years and withdrew it and used it for another purpose. Um, when I became president at St. Xavier uh, in Chicago in 1994, 
it was a very difficult period for the institution financially. It was on the brink of closing. And uh, I was asked to uh, fix that. And, do, and in the board's judgment, that was not the highest priority um, that is fixing the financial side of it. The highest priority was fixing the morale problem. They were linked, of course. Anyway, uh, fast forward a year or so, I paid off all of the debts, did it without laying anyone off, um, began then to plan forward. And uh, I had created something, I'm sure most campuses have something comparable called the Strategic Planning and Budgeting Committee. It had leadership from the faculty, it had the head of the staff council, um, it had uh, all of the deans, several of the vice presidents. It did not have the president, though the president was always welcome. And it was chaired by the, um, uh, by the provost initially, but at certain times by the president, depending on what the issue was. Out of that process came a proposal for centers of excellence. Let's identify three or whatever. Centers of excellence that we will proclaim to the world are over and above every other excellent thing we do. These are even more excellent. This is the best of Lake Wobegon. Everybody's above average, but these are even more above average. And the faculty said no thank you for the same reasons the other school's faculty had said no thank you. There was a vigorous discussion about why that occurred, and that led to Plan B, which was programs of distinction. Centers of excellence is one thing, because center implies that it has a sort of an organizational institutional commitment. Programs of distinction could be programs in the student service area. They could be academic programs. They could be community service programs. They could be research programs. They could be art programs. Program was intentionally a flexible term. And of distinction, did not necessarily mean of prominence relative to the other programs in the institution, but rather distinctive. They were distinctive and distinguishable against their own set of peers. So if we were going to have um, a program or multiple programs or a collective program of distinction in the arts, we would want to say, what, does, what do we do or what can we do with, within our resources to make us distinct relative to our competitors within a 25 mile radius. Or relative to the arts community in the external community that surrounds the campus. That didn't imply better than the next person. What it implied was distinct in some favorable way. And it allowed us to make marginal changes or sometimes dramatic changes with relatively little money and do it across an institution. So what we did was, we set up a protocol that came out of the Strategic Planning and Budgeting Committee, uh, infused with discussions at a lot of different levels at the campus over the course of a year and a half or two, to develop some criteria, some good leading questions about how do you know when something is going to be more distinctive than it has been in the past. You look at external audiences, you look at expertise, you look at hallmarks of achievement, uh, you look at contribution to the institutional mission, you look at a lot of things and understand there's not a single calculus here. These questions all can be valued differently in different decisions. And ultimately, we went a long way with that. We, we spent three or four years and probably a couple million dollars responding to those requests. And frankly, as a president, I said to the Strategic Planning and Budgeting Committee, you can count on the cabinet and the board to give me multi-million dollar fundraising projects. I want you to give me fundraising projects that run between five and a hundred thousand dollars. So when I'm out talking to Jane in the middle of nowhere, and Jane says, you know, I'm, I, I could maybe do $25,000, but I'm not really interested in the scholarship fund or you know, buying a couple knobs in the washroom in the new the new academic center, uh, what have you got that I could fund? I said, I want 50 projects in my hip pocket. And that created a lot of energy because we could make some big differences sometimes in a given department, sometimes with very small amounts of money, and other times it literally did take $10 million. I don't know if that
that's helpful, but I, I think that um, this dialogue will always have some 